All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Uncommon News, where we cover important topics that are unlikely to appear in the mainstream media. Today, I have with me Mr. James Ruguski. Uh, Mr. Ruguski has um, blown the whistle on the World Health Organization and international health regulations that are attempting to usurp the uh, individual sovereignty of the peoples all over the world. Uh, the World Health Organization just released uh, some proposed amendments to the IHR, the International Health Regulations. And uh, Mr. Ruguski, would you please uh, tell the audience about those uh, proposals? Well, the only thing I would correct is um, a change that I've made to the language personally. Um, the International Health Regulations are improperly or inaccurately named. They really are the International Surveillance Regulations. If you read them, you'll probably agree with me that that's really what they are all about. Um, back in May of 2022, the International, um, I'm sorry, the uh, World Health Assembly met in their 75th meeting and they adopted um, an, uh, a situation where they created a working group for amending the international health regulations. Back in May, they said the first meeting would happen before November 15th, and it happened on November 14th and 15th, slightly less than a month ago. And they published finally um, their uh, report of the meeting. And just this morning, they published uh, all of the uh, compiled submissions from 16 different nations four of which submitted on groups, you know, for on behalf of groups of nations, like the EU and the African nations and the South American nations and the Russian Federation, all of these nations submitted proposed amendments to the international health regulations. And it is absolutely ungodly, okay? And, and so I'm here to just um, shed light on documents that they have made public, they do so very quietly, okay? For the last two and a half months, every day, two, three, four times a day, I've been going to their website, you know, wondering, um, have they uploaded the documents that, you know, I know exist? Um, back in October, I submitted Freedom of Information Act uh, requests, four of them, and Yesterday, I got yet another notice that, like, oh, can you give us some more time? Okay. Um, I've convinced or, or in, encouraged people in Canada, the United, two people in the United Kingdom, Finland, South Africa, Great uh, um, Australia, New Zealand, people in all of those nations have submitted freedom of information requests in their nations. The most interesting one was in the UK, two separate people, they got the same response. The United Kingdom uh, Health Department told their people, yeah, we have those documents, but we're not gonna give them to you. Um, it might harm our relations with the other member nations. So needless to say, I've been chomping at the bit trying to get a hold of this information. Uh, it's on my Substack, jamesroguski.substack.com. It's an article that I have not yet published, okay? We're, we're talking because you and I have communicated in the past, and I'm still going through this 46-page document, you know, doing my best to analyze it. And all anybody needs to do is look at the um, Article 3, and I don't know if we've set up screen share here. Um, if you allow me to screen share, I can do that, but I, I'll here. just... I'll just tell people what it says. Um, I'm very familiar with the existing international health regulations. And when they were crafted, it says in Article 3 that they have to be implemented with you know, the utmost respect for the dignity of the human being for your, you know, for your freedoms and your human rights. Right, and that's in the that's in the existing IHR, the, the IHR as it stands right now, correct? 
Exactly. And so, and, and one of the proposals you sent me the email on this, one of the proposals that they made is to actually strike that out. So they, they want, they want to strike out the part that says that any implementation of this IH, IHR must be done with full respect for the dignity, human rights, and fundamental freedom of persons. Right. right. So that, you know, and, and, and they want to change that with, if you don't mind, let me read this. For the Please audience. Sit. Please they sit. want to they want to cross that out they want to they want to get rid of the implementation of the ihr with respect for dignity human rights and fundamental freedom of persons and replace it with this based on the principles of equity inclusivity coherence and in accordance with their common but differentiated responsibility of state parties taken into consideration <clears throat> consideration their social and economic development so in a nutshell, in a nutshell, um, I think that I think that probably took you a glance yeah. and you're like, oh, hell no. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> OK. Yeah, and, no. and so, uh, you know, it's a gift from God, quite frankly, that they could be so obviously blatantly just evil and satanic and, and just go egregious, he, he, egregious human rights freedoms dignity and respect nah we don't need none of that okay usurpation that's what comes to mind here there's a word that they love to use they used it multiple multiple times in the document and that word is equity okay and and i'm just going to sit in a moment of silence right equity right it sounds really close to equality but it's not right if you've ever bought a home and you pay down some of the mortgage, you go, hey, the value of my home increased because people you know, want to buy homes. And, and so my, what I owe on the house is, is less than what the value of the house is. I ha- maybe you fixed up the house. You've got some sweat equity. You've got some just monetary equity, 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 equity. It means money, okay? Right. They're giving up dignity respect human rights and freedom for money now i can't make it any more clear or obvious that that is what they're doing right and I who, de- you who wanted, determines think, what is equity who determines that you know there's so. there's a big old rabbit hole that we can go down and i'll be happy to do that with you i know you wanted to keep this video yeah. really short yeah um, they're let's... basically they basically are creating a um global health architecture okay that will take don't you know money from nations and foundations and funnel it into what i have coined to be the pharmaceutical hospital emergency industrial complex they scare the bejeebers out of you oh there's a catastrophe happening okay the latest one is um catastrophic um um contagion dot com go to go to catastrophic contagion.com okay it's entertaining um they scare the daylights out of you they get regulatory bodies that are bought off to approve things that are not safe and effective and the money flows to their crony friends in the industry of big pharma <clears throat> and that's what we're dealing with this is not about <clears throat> health this is about surveillance compliance governance and right. it- money it's about setting up an international governing authority. Um, I, I want to quickly touch about uh, uh, touch on one of the proposed amendments uh, that they've made, um, and it's it's the uh, exchange of information between state parties or between state parties and the World Health Organization. Uh, they they want to set up a a a way for the states, for the, di- for the different countries to share technological resources and um, what does it say here? Financial assistance. Uh, and when you look at the wording, it, sa- it says that the state parties shall develop and maintain capacities to implement the regulations. When they say implement, they mean enforce, all right? And when it says shall develop, it means they must. Um, now, obviously, we do not recognize the legitimacy of the IHR. However, uh, what they're attempting to do here is to force all of these parties into 
enforcing the IHR and sharing resources with each other um, re regarding the implementation um, of said IHR. Um, and and I, I want to urge the audience to reserve every one of your God-given rights and uh, to, to publicly declare that you do not recognize uh, the IHR as it stands and as it will be amended. Um, Mr. Roguski, do you have anything to say regarding in, that? In, in the WHO constitution, okay, um, the vast majority of what the WHO does falls under Article 23, which is recommendations, okay? Well, hey, you know, um, I might recommend that you do a certain something in your life and you can choose to listen to my advice or not. Okay. Right, right. They agreed back in July that they want to craft legislation that is legally binding. Right. Okay. And so what we're dealing with here, everyone, is a, a, an attempt to take an advisory organization and turn it into an authoritarian organization. Now, if you're okay with that and that's what you want, you want to be told what to do by a bunch of people in Geneva. Um, who are going to profit from your demise, your slow and painful illness and demise, um, then by all means, just go back, sit on your couch and put your head, head back in the sand and don't pay any attention, okay? If you want to fight this and, and push back against what is, you know, as clear as clear can be, um, give me a phone call. My number is 310-619-3055. All of this information is on jamesroguski.substack.com. The hard part of that is spelling my name, J-A-M-E-S-R-O-G-U-S-K-I.substack.com, 310-619-3055. We're, we're in the fight of our life, but they've made a mistake, okay? They have made it so obvious. It's almost like they're begging us to share this, to wake people up, to, to realize that this is obviously ridiculous. It's obviously egregious, evil, authoritarian. Um, when you just take a line and you slash out respect and dignity and freedom and human rights, okay? Could you possibly have given me a better way to explain to people what these WHO organizations are doing, you know, thank you, God, for making it as easy as easy can be. Now, if you look at that and you think I'm a conspiracy theorist or whatever, that's not what I do. All I ever do is get their documents and show them to you. You can ignore them. And I pronounce that word differently than most people. It's not ignorance, it's ignorance, okay? Doesn't mean you're stupid. It means that when you're shown information, you make a conscious choice to ignore it, okay? Exactly. Well, you do, that at, you do that at your own peril. You are, you are being notified <laughs> that they are doing what they are doing. And if you look at the information, all you really have to do is go to Article 3, first line and a half, and they go, nope, no more respect, no more dignity, no more human rights, no more freedom. Yep. yep. They cross it. And you just go, you know, if you're okay with that, well, then, you know, and God bless yeah, you. And, God and bless you. Exactly. And, and you should not be. And uh, speaking of notification, I'm, I'm going to uh, place some people on notice here in this video. Please do. Um, to any agent, officer, employee, or contractor of the federal government or any state, you are hereby on notice. We, the people of the United States, do not recognize the authority of the interna international health regulations. Any attempt to enforce these regulations will be considered an act of war against the sovereignty of the people to be secure in their persons. Therefore, any agent, officer, employee, or contractor attempting to violate our rights at the directive of the international health regulations will be subject to immediate retaliation 
up to and including the use of deadly force. Signed, we the people. If you agree with that, say aye in the comment section below, and uh, we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. Mr. Roguski, do you have anything else uh, left to say? I'll say aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, don't forget, help out your neighbors.